Good morning, city of Boston. This is Andrew McCain. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm here on Sunday morning worship and praise with Brother Chris. I'm interviewing Jonathan McReynolds this morning. Jonathan, thank you for your time. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this interview. We really appreciate it. Oh, man, no problem, man. It's my honor. Yes, sir. Now, I know that you're preparing to go on tour this September. What can fans expect when they come to see one of your shows? Oh, man, you're going to expect a great night of just of fun, uh, reflection, of worship. Man, I'm just excited about it, man. We got, I have, like, I feel like I have the best band in the world. So if you, if you love music, uh, you're just, you're going to have a good time anyway. So, I mean, uh, you know, we're expecting uh, sold out crowds at every place we go to. Half the show is already sold out. And a few, all the rest are coming up behind it. So it's going to be a great vibe, great energy. Something different, um, but something definitely uh, good and um, helpful for the Christian. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm excited to see that. So the city of Boston is excited about coming to see you today at Gospel Fest with Phil Thompson. Now, I got to ask, will you be performing mostly songs from Make Room, or will there be songs from previous albums as well? Oh, we're going to mix it up, man. We're going to mix it up. So I uh, definitely got to do some of the new songs. Uh, thank you guys for the support of the new album and everything. So we're definitely going to do some of that. But, you know, we like to throw it back a little bit sometimes. What you want to hear, Eddie? Um, I definitely want to hear uh, Make Room, Smile. I got to hear The Way That You Love Me. I, I, got, I got a list, man, for real. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Yes, sir. Well, I can't take requests. I don't yeah. even know how much time I got. But, yeah, we'll, we'll do our best, man. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. Now, um, this is Andrew McCain once again on Sunday Morning Worship and Praise with Brother Chris. Now, Jonathan, recently you wrote a thought-provoking article about 10 reasons not to be a gospel artist. And it, 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 it was very powerful, and many people were blessed by it. Now, can you talk about the inspiration behind writing that article? Yeah, man, you know, I get uh, messages in my inbox, uh, direct messages all the time about people, you know, wanting to be a star, <laughs> or wanting to be, you know, a big gospel artist or whatnot. And then, of course, I also have to deal with a lot of um, people kind of looking at me and all the other artists under such a microscope uh, and, and having issues sometimes with what we do and what our brothers and sisters do. And so all of that just went into, you know, me writing this article. I want to, I want to make sure that, you know, the gospel music industry, since it is an industry, it is something that's here, it's something that we can use, uh, has issues, of course, but... You know, it's definitely something that I believe God uh, is and has been working uh, through to get the word out about him and to uh, spread love and, and his power around the world. Since we have it, we got to make sure that it's, it's potent. We got to make sure that it's uh, effective and full of integrity. We got to make sure that everybody that's in it, you know, knows what they want to do and knows what God wants them to do. And they are, you know, prepared and primed to do it. And that's it. You know, we don't need 5 million artists. We just need 50 that are ready to go and do the work of 5 million. And that's so true. I'm just really, I was really just, uh, you know, inspired to, uh, I don't, I, I can't personally weed out anybody. Who am I? But if, if, if that, if that article could bring to people's attention what it took, um, it's not just, you know, it's not, very glamorous. It's not very, um, it's not safe. Uh, you know, it's not always fun. And uh, the weight of the ministry assignment is, is quite heavy uh, all the time. If I could get somebody to think that, or rethink and reconsider uh, either uh, what they want to do um, and more importantly, how they're going to do it, I think I would have served um, uh, my purpose. Absolutely. I like what you said there about, you know, we don't need 5 million gospel artists. We just need 50 to do the work of, of 5 million. That's very powerful. Um, also, yeah, man. Yeah. Also, in, in the article, I remember you saying something like uh, the gospel industry in, in the grand scheme of things is very small. A lot of times we could lose sight of that because, you know, gospel may be everything to you. You may have grew up on it. That may be all you listen to. But in the grand scheme of things, it's really a small genre. Do you think that, you know, in the near future that can change somewhat? Uh, I don't think that we really wanted to. I mean, it sounds good, but I mean, what is, 
What does that even mean? I mean, I think that, you know, even though it's a small genre, and it's always been a pretty small genre, uh, you got to think how many how many black people are there. I'm right. not talking about just the black side of the gospel. How many black people are there? It's about 13% of the country. Yeah. And then how many of them consume, you know, gospel music on a regular basis? It's never been a whole lot of people. Uh, but it's always been a very influential and society and culture changing genre. And so uh, I don't even think we really need to be big as far as numbers, but I'm excited because we have the opportunity to be powerful and effective and continue to be uh, who I, you know, I, I think will always be respected and admired even by larger genres or larger artists when it comes to, you know, stats and whatever else. Absolutely. It's all about the impact. Now, when you first came out as an artist, you were seen as a breath of fresh air in gospel because you brought a new sound that wasn't previously being heard in the in the genre. And even today, you're still seen as a bre breath of fresh air. Can you talk about how you've remained consistent in being true to yourself and not going with the trends that everyone else is doing? I mean, I guess you said it right there, man. Just be true to yourself. Like, you know, uh, I've, I have learned to become very... Uh, you know, appreciative of how God orchestrates life. I mean, he, he allows our lives to have a certain pace and a certain journey and a certain way, um, you know, it's only, it only could be done by his sovereignty. And so when you look at that and the passion that we have and the personality that we have, God is up to something Absolutely. with your unique self. And as soon as you move out of your uniqueness and, how he uniquely made you, or David, or Joseph, or Abraham, or Moses, or Jesus himself, then you kind of miss out on your actual, your actual, you know, responsibility and role here on earth. And so, yeah, I, you know, I just, I just know that I'm a pretty weird person, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that God has, has had some very specific purpose for me. And uh, as soon as everybody else can figure out how weird they are and be fine with it, uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of things can be done. Absolutely. So, this once again, this is Andrew McCain on Sunday Morning Worship and Praise with Brother Chris. Now, Jonathan, I got to tell you, the, the album that you released, Make Room, I would say it, it's, it's an absolutely amazing album. I, in my opinion, it's the album of the year. Now, um, Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Can you talk about how the idea for that project came about? Did you write the song, Make Room, first, and then continue with that theme? Or how, how, did, how did the idea for the album come about? No, man, actually it's the opposite. You know, I always just write, uh, I never really write with a specific theme, you know, going into it. You know, I'm just kind of writing about my life. I can't, I, you know, in just whatever songs that, you know, come up uh, as my life is, you know, progressing. Um, you know, I wrote Love of My Soul and Great is the Lord. I, you know, I adapted that song, uh, you know, for church just because I was leading worship uh, at a, a uh, great church out here in Chicago, and I don't know that many worship songs. I grew up as a church guy in Christ, Oregon, so we mm -hmm. didn't know a whole bunch of, you know, the new school contemporary worship songs, and, you know, honestly, musically, those are not my interest, so I had to write songs just to be able to, to uh, you know, have those services, and so those popped up on that album. Uh, you know, songs like Cycles and Comparison Kills, they just come straight out of my life, but when I looked at the entire season after it was all over, the last song that I wrote was baseball. And the last, you know, once I looked at how, okay, I've been trying to get better, I've been trying to end cycles, I've been trying to do this, I've been trying to do that. At the end of the day, I got all this stuff going on in my life, and, it's, and most of it's great, but I got to make sure that I don't crowd God out. Wow. So I can do better, and I can end cycles. And so actually make room, uh, even in conjunction to all, with all the things that we were doing, uh, with the life room and we were going around the country and doing life room. Everything was just about making sure that God had room outside of church and just in our lives in general. So all work together. And so actually, yeah, make room was the last song. It was the newest song on the album. Wow, that, that's, that's a great viewpoint. So, you know, you being one of the best uh, lyricists and songwriters in the game right now, how do you push yourself to continue delivering content that's thought provoking because I remember when Cycles came out, it was like from the first time I heard the first verse, I, every bar I was like, "Wow, wow, wow!" And I'm sure everybody else had that experience. They're just 
hanging on to every word. How do you push yourself to continue to 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 de deliver songs with deep lyrical content that also ministers at the same time? Man, I write the songs that I need to hear. Wow. You know, um, uh, I love gospel and all that is done. I love the, the worship anthems and all that other stuff. But, you know, sometimes I need something to speak directly to just the good, bad, and the ugly of life. And so, you know, from the very beginning, from No Gray uh, and Loving Me On, it was always about writing music that me and my friends need to hear. And we go to church all the time. And right. we had been in church for a decade. Um, but there was still something missing from, you know, what was being offered to us when it came to music. Uh, and that's what I've been trying to... Now, Jonathan, with all that you have going on, you still somehow find the time to be a full-time professor at Columbia College. How do you balance that with everything else that you have going on? I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities, and I say, Jesus, you are my number one. But all, teaching is also one of my favorite things to do. And so just like any human, we normally find ways to do what we want to do. And, uh, you know, teaching is definitely something that, you know, it's, it's not like what makes me a whole lot of money or anything like that. But, you know, I just really enjoy it. I enjoy the opportunity to bring things full circle. I enjoy uh, the opportunity to, you know, give people sometimes their first introduction to what God is and what church culture is. I enjoy that responsibility. I enjoy uh, hopefully framing it in a good light because uh, you never know how down the line that could change your life. You know, I really just enjoy that, that opportunity uh, when I have a captive audience and good students, you know, my whole, my whole being is re-energized. And so I just enjoy it, man. So we, we make, we make room for it to happen. Man, I'm glad that you're able to have an impact on people that may not have grown up in church and they don't necessarily know what the church culture is, but you could be that bridge for them. And that's really powerful. Now, Jonathan, I got to ask you this. Where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? God has definitely put his feet in the ground already. I mean, uh, I, you know, do a lot of different things, and that is by design, God's design, and then, you know, also mine. You know, I, I appreciate all these different facets of life that are happening from, you know, TV stuff to, uh, you know, releasing a book this fall, uh, you know, the touring, of course, my nonprofit, which is called Elijah Nation, which is all about bringing wisdom to the forefront. We've been giving out scholarships every year. Um, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot, and uh, even the life room talks that we've been doing around the country. Absolutely, man. All right, thank you so much, Jonathan McReynolds. We really appreciate you coming on this morning to give us this interview, and we're excited to see you at Gospel Fest. God bless you.